If you have an interest in paleoanthropology, you are probably familiar with the Jebel Irhud skull from Morocco. This 330,000-year-old fossil was recently declared the earliest Homo sapiens, but this fact is not as widely accepted as one might expect. Importantly, the dating of the fossil corresponds to an extremely warm period, which will be discussed later in the video. Some experts believe that, rather than an early Homo sapiens, this fossil could be an offshoot of the last common ancestor with Neanderthals, a Neanderthal sapiens hybrid, or a female Neanderthal, due to the gracile face. In fact, Neanderthal skulls with gracile faces are classified as female, including the Gibraltar skull and others. In the year 1961, a fossil human skull was discovered during a mining operation in Morocco's Jebel Irhud mountain pass, located about 100 kilometers west of Marrakesh. Following the excavation, more human bones, animal remains and stone tools were discovered. At the time, scientists' best guess was that the remains represented African Neanderthals. In the decades that followed, researchers changed their minds about the identity of the remains, coming to see them as members of our own species, Homo sapiens, and redated the site to around 330,000 years ago. Still, the Jebel Irhud fossils have remained a mystery, as they appear more primitive than other Homo sapiens fossils. However, not everyone is convinced that the Jebel Irhud fossils belong to Homo sapiens, because their modern-looking characteristics may not reflect a connection to our species. For example, the analysis did not compare the Jebel Irhud remains to fossils from Spain, dating back more than 800,000 years. This archaic human population also has a facial morphology that is very similar to modern humans, and it is much older than Jebel Irhud. Maybe Jebel Irhud was evolving into modern humans, but another possibility is that it is retaining facial morphology from a European population that may have been the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and later African archaic humans, according to other researchers. According to a recent study, Jebel Irhud, one's shortest Euclidean distance, is to the South European Neanderthals, specifically the Gibraltar Neanderthal cranium. Euclidean distance matrix analysis is a coordinate-free method for comparing biological shapes with landmark data. The Euclidean distance is defined as the square root of the squared differences between corresponding elements. The Euclidean distance formula is used to convey genetic dissimilarity between populations in the simplest way possible, with a larger distance indicating greater dissimilarity. It was previously thought that little DNA analysis could be performed on the Gibraltar skull, but ancient DNA has now been extracted from these fossils. We now know the skull's sex as well as how it may be related to Neanderthal relatives beyond Gibraltar. These findings demonstrate that it is now possible to analyze DNA in highly contaminated fossils from relatively warm climates. This also shows promise for recovering comparable ancient DNA from regions such as North Africa's Jebel Irhud. The number of specimens relevant for a Neanderthal evaluation has decreased significantly over the years due to a continuous process of what is called de-Neanderthalization. This term refers to the process by which human fossils previously identified as Neanderthals were re-evaluated and redefined. The Jebel Irhud remains, for example, were originally thought to be Neanderthaloids, but were later identified as Homo sapiens. This viewpoint was later supported by chronological evidence which indicated a much later date for these specimens, implying the improbability of any affinity with the Neanderthals. As a result of this de-Neanderthalization process, only a few ancient fossils found outside of Europe are considered genuine Neanderthals. Indeed, the Jebel Irhud fossils raise significant questions about what characteristics define our species. Is it the globular skull and its implications for brain reorganization that distinguishes early Homo sapiens? If so, the Irhud people are not our close relatives. If, on the other hand, a small face and the shape of the lower jaw are the key characteristics, the Jebel Irhud discovery could be one of our true ancestors, shifting the focus of scientists studying modern human origins from sub-Saharan Africa to the Mediterranean. While some researchers do not doubt the dating of these findings, 
they do question whether these specimens can truly be called Homo sapiens. After all, they differ significantly from us in terms of brain shape, which is a distinguishing feature of our species. You have to be fairly strict with what you admit into Homo sapiens, says one sceptic. There are plenty of people out there who are willing to take a much looser definition of what Homo sapiens is, and would be happy to cram this into Homo sapiens for the sake of convenience or even philosophy, concluded the sceptic. In fact, since its discovery and description as a Neanderthal, Jebel Ehud's phylogenetic position has been contested. There is still disagreement about the phylogenetic position of the Jebel Ehud one skull, as well as how its neurocranial and endocranial morphology should be interpreted. Since the initial description of Jebel Ehud one, analyses of this cranium and other specimens from the site have yielded varying results, particularly in terms of whether any of the fossils from the site share the derived traits common to Neanderthals. Nevertheless, the Jebel Ehud remains were originally described as having strong similarities to Neanderthals, but new research on the Ehud remains emphasizes their affinities with Homo sapiens, despite the lack of key modern human apomorphies. The material from Jebel Ehud contributes to the debate over where anthropologists should draw the line in terms of how human something must be to be considered a modern human. Some are concerned about the study's claims that the Moroccan fossils are from the Homo sapiens clade. These papers are going too far. They redefine the concept of Homo sapiens by introducing a new category of early modern humans which has never seen before. Many scientists have noted the Jebel Ehud brain case's archaic features, as well as some facial similarities to modern humans. The excellent preservation of most of Jebel Ehud's anatomical regions, its phylogenetic position remains uncertain, particularly in relation to the emergence of the modern human lineage. The research paper provides a basic morphometric description and comparison of the endocast of Jebel Ehud I. The endocast's maximum width is large in comparison to its hemispheric length, with values similar to those of Neanderthals. The vertical proportions are similar to those of Homo erectus, whereas the lateral proportions are similar to Neanderthals. Furthermore, the upper parietal areas exhibit lateral bulging, as seen in European Neanderthals. Indeed, the research community is engaged in a covert but fierce battle. On one side, some believe the Neanderthal is a different version of ourselves. Some argue that it is an archaic form of humanity with far inferior intellectual abilities, a subhuman, a quasi-human, or any other derogatory adverb that can be used before or after the word human. So, was the Neanderthal a unique combination of nature and culture, or a simple caveman? In this battle of opposing viewpoints, the portrait we can draw today is either too clear, too obvious, too simplified, and too neat to be taken seriously, or it is extremely confusing. Biologists identify everyone on the planet today as Homo sapiens, regardless of appearance or location. In fact, some commentators now argue that the extinct Neanderthals, with their thick brows and large noses, should be classified as our species as well. So, what defines our species? And who can join the exclusive club? Biologists can study everything from our own evolutionary history by classifying living things as species. Today, biologists identify each species based on its distinct characteristics. How do Homo sapiens and Neanderthals differ? Homo sapiens has a high, rounded, globular brain case and a relatively narrow pelvis. Our brain case and pelvic shape can easily distinguish a modern human from a Neanderthal whose fossils show a longer, lower skull and a wider pelvis. With careful measurements, we can easily distinguish our three tiny middle ear bones, which are required for hearing from those of Neanderthals. Indeed, the shape differences in the ear bones are more pronounced than those between our closest living relatives, the chimpanzees and gorillas. Jebel Ehud fossils could also add to recent genomic findings, indicating that the ancestral Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA was replaced by Homo sapiens mitochondrial DNA between 460,000 and 219,000 years ago. Given the phenotypic affinities of Jebel Ehud, one with both Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens, it is possible 
that the Jebel Irhud fossils represent local descendants of an African population that dispersed out of Africa during a Green Sahara event associated with marine isotope stage 9, which occurred 337,000 to 300,000 years ago. Thus, they are related to the Homo sapiens populations that introgressed into the European lineage at this time, and thus contributing to the evolution of the classic European Neanderthal. For millennia, these human creatures coexisted in various locations around the world. More recently, we have learned that these species did, in fact, meet at some point. The question of their relationship is fascinating, because the DNA of every early Homo sapiens fossil in Europe contains Neanderthal DNA. However, if we look at the last Neanderthals, we can see that none of them have recent Homo sapiens DNA. So, what happened? Why do all Homo sapiens in Europe have Neanderthal DNA, but no recent Neanderthals have recent Homo sapiens DNA? And with that tantalizing statement, we will leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Please subscribe, share and check out our channel's other videos. Take care.